What's crack? Big dogs. Oh, bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs. Gotta eat. I'm sorry for all y'all that are new that just come in here and like see me do that fucking obnoxious intro. And then they're like, fuck this guy. I'd probably say the same thing if the first time I ever saw somebody on YouTube, he looked like a horse welcoming. I'm sorry. Really? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to absolutely fucking nobody. We're talking about waiver wire targets for week eight. This is going to be a quick video because there's literally like nobody I want to pick up on the waiver wire. This week stinks. There wasn't enough injuries. We want more injuries. We want more breaks. We want more tears. We want more fucking sprains. Where are the football guys when we need them? Not for real. There weren't a lot of injuries. There's not much to talk about this week. Oh, of course, we have to tuck our shirts in. <laughs> Crew next now in store. BDGE dot store stitched in logo. It looks fucking pretty. We're going to stop yelling. Let's eat. All right, so just a quick uh, a quick thing for the quarterback position, all right? A couple guys I want to just go over. I'm not talking about, like, QB1 streaming options, like the quarterback 21 that you might be able to play because it's a good matchup. Three guys I think are worth talking about right now are Tyrod Taylor because he returned to practice. He is day-to-day, -day, and I believe he will be the starting quarterback as soon as he is healthy enough to do so. And he had some good games in the beginning of the season, or at least he played well in the first game or so uh, that he was healthy for before pulling the hamstring. Okay, so he's a viable player in super flex leagues. There's a really good chance Trey Lance gets the starting job sooner rather than later if he is healthy. Kyle Shanahan would not commit to Jimmy G going forward. And that is like the first time all year that we've really seen that from him. So I think with Jimmy G playing like straight ass cheeks and Trey Lance getting healthier, there's a possibility that Trey Lance takes over the starting job. And the last six games for the 49ers, let me read it off to you real quick. Starting week 11, Jacksonville, Minnesota, Seattle, Cincinnati, Atlanta, Tennessee, Houston. All right, that was seven games, I believe. But the fantasy playoffs, no matter what kind of league you're in, Seattle, Cincinnati, Atlanta, Tennessee, Houston. Atlanta, Tennessee, Houston. Atlanta, Tennessee, Houston. Weeks 15, 16, and 17. So if Trey Lance is available in your one quarterback leagues, pick his ass up. If he's somehow available in your two effect leagues, blow the budget. All right. The other thing is Deshaun Watson. From what I know right now, if Deshaun Watson gets traded before the November 2nd trade deadline, he will be available to play immediately. He is not going on the commissioner's exempt list from what I know. So he will be able to play. Here's what's going on the Deshaun Watson situation. You have multiple teams, not just the Miami Dolphins. Multiple teams are in talks with the Houston Texans on potentially trading for Deshaun Watson. That does not mean as of right now, this very second, that a trade is imminent. Just that there is, in fact, interest. Carolina Panthers believed to be one of those teams, and there are some others. So that is where the trade talks stand. Nothing has been done, but the interest is there. Meanwhile, Deshaun Watson's legal situation is uh, still, as of right now, unresolved. Teams are still interested in trading for Watson, even if that does not get resolved. Uh, so that is another thing to keep an eye on. Plus, Watson is in shape. He is ready to go football-wise, and there has been no indication, Tom, that the NFL will place him on the commissioner's exempt list. So if the Texans do trade him rather than have him sit on the inactive list for the rest of the season, uh, he would be eligible to play right away. I don't think he's going to play right away because he's obviously got to learn the playbook and all that kind of shit. But Deshaun Watson, it looks like if he gets traded, which he has a no-trade clause and he wants to go to Miami, so if they work out something, he will be playing at some point this year so he needs to be picked up that's really all we got at the quarterback position at the running back position really the only thing to talk about is the miles sanders injury and as of me recording this video we don't have any updates on the miles sanders injury he went off the field with a looked like a low ankle sprain he ended up getting carted off from the sideline out of the stadium whatever wherever the fuck they go with the carts right play a mario kart in the hallways miles sanders probably gonna be out a week maybe two weeks maybe three weeks i don't know he could be on the ir what that means is kenny gainwell and boston scott are going to be a committee for the philadelphia eagles backfield it's not one that i care about the rushing work right so everyone's gonna be like it's boston scott because scott out carried gainwell on sunday seven to five but gainwell 
was the guy in the backfield running 24 routes to Boston Scott's 12 was targeted way more five catches for 40 yards whatever and a touchdown he's the pass catching back was a great pass catcher in college I expect him to be the number one target on the waiver wire this week get most of the pass catching work in an offense that does not run the ball anyways Miles Sanders is getting like five carries a week all right so you're not looking to capitalize on Boston Scott's eight carries a game all right not an offense that you want the premier runner in any way so Gainwell would be my number one waiver wire pickup depending on what we hear from Miles Sanders injury news if he's out for a long time, yeah, I'd probably use my number one waiver wire on Kenny Gainwell if I needed help at running back. 15 to 20% at this point, I think, is probably okay for whatever you have left. I'm not going to go overboard because we've just seen the running back in Philadelphia not be that valuable of a position. Uh, but a lot of times we've seen like the starting, we've seen Miles Sanders be hurt before, and then whoever takes over as his as his starting running back does really well. This happens all the time. Like Joe Mixon gets hurt, whoever's his backup, Samaj P. Ryan goes off for a career fucking day. Always happens with backup running backs for whatever reason. So Kenny Gainwell would be the number one pickup this week. There are really no other running backs like worth talking about. You have Brandon Bolden has taken over as the James White guy in New England. So PPR leagues, you could look at Brandon Bolden to catch the ball five times. Uh, Malcolm Brown is hurt. He just got put on the IR. So Miles Gaskin might've been dropped after last week or whatever. So if he's available, you can pick him back up a little bit more confidence in him. You're not picking up Salvin Ahmed, obviously. Las Vegas, I think is worth like kind of noting because Kenyon Drake is starting to get a lot more work. Josh Jacobs did get hurt though. He was like a chest injury, which is probably like a ribs injury. They do have their bye in week eight. So he's got two weeks to rest. So he'll probably be back by the next time they play. But if he's not, then Kenyon Drake is the guy. Maybe Peyton Barber gets a little bit more involved, but he was a healthy scratch, so I'm assuming it's going to be all Kenyon Drake type shit. Also, for bye weeks this week, we have a lot easier of a week on our rosters. It is just Baltimore, and it is just the Raiders. All right, so we have the Ravens and the Raiders, the only teams on a bye for week eight, so a lot easier to field an actual team. From the wide receiver side of things, when it comes to waiver wire pickups, there's like really nobody here to pick up. Marquez Valdez-Scantling should be back from his IR stint this week. If he's not, though, Alan Lazard becomes pretty interesting because Alan Lazard has been heating up a little bit. He's been in the kitchen cooking. He's got back-to-back games with uh, a touchdown, six targets, five catches, 60 yards, and a tug on Sunday. So he's looking like the number two behind Devonte Adams here for whatever that is worth. Otherwise, I mean, you could look at the Giants because they still got everybody banged up. But I assume one of like Shepard, Galladay, Barkley, those guys will be back this week. So it makes Darius Slayton pretty uh, irrelevant. I don't think Tony's going to be back, but if he is back, obviously, and if he's available on your waiver wire for whatever reason, you obviously pick him up. But there's like really no other wide receivers on the wire worth talking about. Uh, Khalif Raymond, this was like his first time in four weeks. He was over like 30 receiving yards. So this is not a game I'm getting excited about for Khalif Raymond. Rashad Bateman, obviously, if he's available on your wire, you pick him up. Three catches, 80 yards, getting more and more involved in this offense, running more routes. Again, because they don't have Dobbins, because they don't have Gus Edwards, because they don't have a real running game, they're going so pass heavy right now that uh, that you want Hollywood, you want Mark Andrews, you want Rashad Bateman in your starting lineup. So Rashad Bateman, obviously, I highly doubt is available. Russell Gage, I'm not getting excited about it. Uh, he just returned from his ankle injury, but even prior to the ankle injury, he was not. This is not a, an exciting passing offense. I know Matt Ryan's been playing well, but he's played Miami, he's played the Jets, he's played like he's played a bunch of shitty ass pass defenses. The schedule picks up a little bit. Carolina, Dallas, New England, teams like that. So I think you'll see them struggle a little bit more. Plus, he's the clear wide receiver three or weapon number. Actually, probably weapon four behind. Pitts, Corderell, Calvin Ridley, then maybe Russell Gage. So I'm not excited about him either. This entire episode is just telling you about guys I'm not excited about pretty much. This is probably the worst waiver wire week of the season. At tight end, uh, we've had so many good waiver wire pickups throughout the year so far with Ricky Seals Jones and guys like that, which is like super rare. You almost never get tight ends to pick up, but we have had some good ones throughout the 2021 season. For this week, I would say you could look at CJ Ozoma. Uh, only three targets, but caught all three of them. Two touchdowns for like 80 yards. He's an explosive playmaker. So while the volume is not there, obviously Chase and Higgins are the one and two. Ozoma is a guy that makes big plays. He can make big plays because he's very, very athletic. And this is an offense that's starting to unleash Joe Burrow. So I expect the volume to continue to be there for this passing offense. And Ozoma will have his big his big plays and his big days. Ozoma's a guy, if you're desperate, tight end premium league, look at him. Mo Ali Cox continues to be super, super involved in the red zone. This Indianapolis Colts offense is heating up. Carson Wentz is heating up. The offensive line is doing well. 
Uh, so Miley Cox is a guy that you can definitely look at to pick up at the tight end position. And then depending on Darren Waller's status, if Darren Waller somehow can't come back after the week eight buy, they do have a week eight buy. Uh, Foster Moreau played really well, six catches, 60 yards and a touchdown. But obviously, if Darren Waller's playing, you are not playing Mr. Foster Moreau. Uh, and I think that's probably it on the waiver wire. And then obviously, Cincinnati versus the New, New York Jets. Anyone playing the New York Jets, you want to pick up and stream. All right. So Cincinnati, I would also, if you have a roster spot for next week, India is playing the Jets at home with Mike White at quarterback. And then they play Jacksonville Jaguars at home the week after. So you have two weeks in a row of streaming for the Indianapolis Colts. If you have an extra roster spot, you can get them now. So Cincinnati plays the Jets this week, Indianapolis the week after that. Those are always going to be your targets. All right. That's all we got for the waiver wire this week. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button right underneath here. We will be streaming, live streaming the Thursday Night Football game this week. Packers versus Cardinals. Animal, snacks, one chains, enter the HQ, a.k.a. my living room. And we'll be watching the game with y'all. We'll have giveaways. We'll have games to play. We'll do all that kind of shit. Subscribe. Make sure you got notifications on for the channel. That's it. I love y'all. I'm out of here.